Now I turn to uh, Denmark's ambassador to India, His Excellency Freddy Swan. Uh, Excellency, uh, you know, I uh, had the privilege of interviewing uh, him some time back, and I was struck by his optimism and conviction in India's rising destiny. What I want to ask you today is this. Has the second wave of the pandemic uh, in India impacted your optimism about India's future? What more can the EU and India and India and Denmark do by way of combating the pandemic in the coming weeks and months? Uh, also, uh, coming to the second part, which is uh, on the climate change agenda, which emerged out of the India-EU summit, uh, given Denmark's expertise in green and renewable energies and technologies, what role can Denmark play in advancing green partnership between India and the EU? Over to you, Excellence. Thank you very much, uh, Manish. Good to see all the colleagues being around uh, from, from Delhi and from MEA and also from uh, Dubrovnik. Uh, it's a great honor to be invited for this. Let me start by saying um, uh, diplomacy is about being optimistic. You can't do anything if you are pessimistic and you give up. So I'm still confident that whatever happens in India has happened, that India will have the uh, resources and the, uh, let's say the strength to overcome this uh, huge, huge uh, challenge that we have seen. Luckily, the numbers COVID-wise are going down. Uh, uh, we all know that India uh, has a scale when it comes to the opportunities and, and of course also the challenges, so keep that in mind. But let me start by uh, praising uh, both the EU as well as the, uh, the uh, Portuguese presidency for having really managed to deliver um, a milestone that would put the Indo European relationship into a new era and take it to a new level. There's a total alignment of priorities as well as of values that will secure that whatever we are undertaking, and of course, trade is important, investment is important, connectivity stands out in the Pacific, but also climate change. The more aligned we are, the bigger we will be. Uh, uh, position to deal with all these issues and I'm pretty sure that India given the transition happening that India will really develop a common agenda with the European Union when it comes to a lot of these issues but let me speak on on the climate change Denmark and India we um, agreed on the so-called green strategic partnership uh, back in September last year. And that's setting out kind of overall framework where we are trying to really to look into how we can bring our skills that the Indian Prime Minister alluded to many times, the Danish solutions that will really fit with the scale of India. And on top of that, we have the speed and the scope. Let me explain the speed. We all know that we have to fight the climate changes. We know it's urgent. We know there are a lot of milestones coming up. We know there are a lot of commitments. Have we met them? Yes or no? Back in 2009, we had the famous COP15 in Denmark. At that time, the developed countries promised to transfer 100 billion US dollars per year to the developing countries. It has not happened. So it's a big, big issue that we had to deliver on. Secondly, we have the uh, transfer of technology. Uh, in order really to cope with climate changes, we need to have a transfer of the best technolo technologies available. Why? Because India is in a phase where India has to develop, and the EU-India summit is setting out the right framework for this continued high-level dialogue on climate change and energy. So in that context, I think we have uh, reached a very important milestone. Not that the summit per se delivered any spectacular uh, results on the climate change, but given the overall context where we are fully aligned as to priorities, basic principles, I think we have an even better platform really to deliver. Also in view of what was highlighted in the statement, namely that the process or transition towards low carbon future has to be just and equitable. And there we have from the EU side seen from my point of view and Denmark's point of view, 
we have to bring in the skills, the solutions that India uh, will need in her transition to a far better and more sustainable and greener society. And if you look into the statement, the headline reads, protecting our planet and fostering green growth. Our experience is that green growth is not just about political statements. It's also a better way to create new and permanent jobs. So in that context, I think the summit in that context also delivered. And I sincerely hope that we will see a lot of progress in the coming years. So in that context, uh, uh, EU and India are the natural partners. And I do hope with the good uh, offices and the good efforts of India, G7, G20, and so forth, that we will be able to deliver on, on the uh, COP26, which is an important milestone where we have really to commit ourselves to the, the goals that were set out by the Paris Agreement.